Uh, ma'am, these are Excel images of MRI brain, uh, uh, which you are provided to me. First is T2 weighted, and second is T1 weighted, and third is GRE images. I can appreciate abnormally intensity lesion, very different lobulated uh, abnormally intensity lesion noted in the right uh, parietal region, predominantly involving the uh, white matter, and it is also extending into the cortex. And it is showing heterogeneous uh, signals on T2-weighted images with peripheral hyperintense frame. Uh, and on T1-weighted images, this uh, hyperintense frame is uh, also hyperintense on hyperintense on T1-weighted images, and it is also mixed to hyperintense signals on T1-weighted images. On um, GRE images, this okay. DNA is showing significant this DNA is showing significant blooming uh, artifact, and uh, multiple other blooming okay. artifact they are also appreciated. Uh, in the region of uh, left frontoparietal region, uh, which uh, can't appreciate on T2 and T1 weighted images. Okay. Then and, another uh, one is the T1 and T2 weighted. Uh, another smaller one here. Okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, ventricular so, system. Is okay. Rest, rest of the brain parenchyma is unremarkable. Please give your diagnosis. Ma'am, uh, based on these findings, uh, it is a 13-year-old uh, patient, and um, ma'am, uh, this hyperintense frame, it is uh, it signifies it signifies that uh, it could be a uh, hemorrhage or it could be a uh, calcification. Um, you are right. We have uh, hemosiderin. If it had been calcification, it had been uh, right. depicting different yeah, signals. So. It is in the context of the previous case, and I said that we have to, you know, uh, search for more. So this is a familial cavernoma yes. syndrome in context to the previous case. It has the similar signal intensity, similar blooming, similar T2 hemosiderin, but there are more than one in this case. Yes. So it is in a small young boy. So it is a familial condition, and it is called familial cavernoma syndrome. Uh, yes, so these are uh, cavernomas are slow flow venous malformations, and for familial syndrome syndrome the diagnostic criteria includes that there should be at least five or more yes. and uh, another um, diagnostic criteria includes that their occurrence should be in at least two family members of the same family GRE or susceptibility is a very good sequence in which you can appreciate almost all of them there were multiple at different levels and we could appreciate them on susceptibility weighted or GRE uh, image Surgery is uh, indicated only in those cases because now you have to tell what what should be your you know next step in that case uh, uh, as per your exam guidelines. So we send those uh, for surgery neurosurgical opinion uh, which have large uh, cavernomas and there is a potential uh, chance of hemorrhage. Uh, I'm provided with the CT scan a uh, brain axial image uh, showing a well defined um, hyperdense uh, rounded um, area or a lesion in the left top parietal lobe um, uh, having slight, very mild uh, surrounding uh, with the genic edema uh, and uh, no significant mass spec. Uh, the adjacent uh, sulci gare pattern <coughs> cannot be well appreciated. Um, on the no evidence of any. Um, uh, the, the contralateral cerebral hemisphere appears normal. Uh, in context of my findings, what do you uh, call this? Diagnosis, it's a hematoma, most likely uh, on the basis of history and the imaging findings. It's most likely a bleed. Okay, what hematoma. do you want? What do you? What next are you going to advise the patient next? Next, I would like to uh, see the MRI of the patient. Uh, to stage okay. the hematoma. So this is the MRI of the patient. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Yes. This is the MRI. Yes. Um, so now, uh, I'm provided with the administration of the hematoma. Yes, ma'am. The I'm provided okay. with multiplan sequential okay. MRI, so which is the brain. Of hematoma? It's uh, on T1. It's um, isodense, and on T2, it's dark. Um, I mean. And so most likely, it's um, acute. <coughs> okay, so uh, on T1, it is iso-intense, and on T2, it is dark. So it is, uh, it's acute. It is IB. That is, that is hyper-acute. Yeah. 
hyper acute is also intense on T1 and dark on T2. So can you explain the sequences to me one by one? Yes, madam. Uh, the most uh, left one and the first row is uh, T2 A. Uh, sorry, you said correctly. This, this, this is uh, sorry. Did I correct you? This is acute. Right? It is iso intense on T1 and dark on uh, T2. If it had been hyper acute, it had been bright on uh, T2. Right. So, so you were correct. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. You were correct. Okay. okay. Uh, on uh, T2, <coughs> on T2, it's a. Uh, it's showing a uh, center is a uh, hypo intense with surrounding uh, uh, hyper intensity, which is most likely uh, edema due to the hematoma on T1. Yes. Uh, it's uh, iso intense to the surrounding brain panic gamma. On GR images, the uh, internal the center of the lesion is uh, showing booming artifact, which uh, goes with the hemorrhage. And uh, <coughs> on uh, uh, it, the last two are the ADC and the diffusion weighted images, which uh, show uh, restricted. Which, which do not show any restriction of diffusion. So, um, most likely this okay. space occupying region is not any mass or malignancy, it's most likely hematoma. Okay, so why will there be a spontaneous hematoma in a 15 years old female? Do you want to work up more? Yes, yes. I want to look search for any aneurysm, uh, any aneurysm or any congenital anomaly of the um, cerebral uh, vessels. So, I would like to see any MRA patient i would suggest what MRI or congenital CT. anomalies of brain we can find what can you name any congenital anomalies of the brain which can lead and to this very aneurysms very aneurysms they are most likely the one okay. to bleed you said in. aneurysm and very aneurysms anything else um brismal dilatation as well as any um Okay. So this is the MRA and MRV. This is the MRA and MRV of the patient. Can you appreciate something? Mm, yes, ma'am. The first image is from MRA and it shows a normal posterior circulation. However, um, the middle cerebral artery on the left side. There okay. is some. Uh, I can uh, in the last image I can also. Appreciate uh, some arteriovenous malformations. Okay, so um, uh, will you label this as an AVM on these images, or will you go for you? You will give some more road mapping to the clinician. Ma'am, maybe I will go for the conventional to look for the draining vessel, uh, draining artery, and the draining vein and the feeding vessel. Okay, so you will go for a DSA, right? You will go for yes. a DSA. Yes, so, uh, just to revise the stages of uh, hemorrhage for everybody, everybody knows them already. I just shared a slide in the video. Uh, the patient first underwent CT NGO in our hospital. Um, part of road mapping was given on this, but still the patient was later on referred for uh, DSA before uh, treatment. This was an ABM, uh, which has multiple feeders from internal and uh, external carotid arteries and there were uh, there was the drainage was uh, drainage was in the superior sagittal sinus through superficial cortical veins. So always remember that uh, the gold standard for AVMs is DSA. This is an image from StatDX. And uh, what we have to do on uh, MRA and uh, CTA and baseline MR images as well as on DSA is that we have to look for three components. That is, we have to look for arterial feeders, then we have to look at AVM nidus, and then we have to look for venous drainage. Because on the basis of size of nidus, we uh, perform the spectral marking uh, staging, and then we label the uh, AVM accordingly, and the treatment is decided as per the uh, uh, grading criteria. Uh, similarly, you have to keep that have annual stent to 15% in 10% of the patients and the intranidal annuals are seen in almost up to 50% of the patients of AVM. Uh, there are different uh, treatment plannings available. We have to uh, do this grading uh, according to the size of the nidus. Different points are uh, given as per different size. Then we have to localize the lesion that it is an eloquent or non-eloquent area. In exam, they can ask you about the eloquent areas. You should be familiar with uh, different eloquent areas, including the motor sensory as well as the visual auditory areas. You should be familiar with the locations because 
uh, a lot of time examiners you know they take viva on this you should be able to localize them on your mr images and uh, then you should be able to pick up that the drainage is superficial to or deep because all the uh, scale the scale contain all of these criteria so explained it very well later on we uh, had this um, chest x-ray of the same patient so can you appreciate something on this and as i told you initially that in part 2 uh, exam the cases which are shown to you you have to make a diagnosis out of the images provided to you most of the times or you have to reach a close differential at least there should be a logical approach to your uh, interpretation of images like i said that in young patients whenever we you see intraparenchymal uh, hemorrhage you have to uh, find an avm with that on ct images you cannot find that because the vessels they going to spasm and there is an acute ple for her uh, you know further uh, man this was the appearance of chest x-ray so please explain this uh, it is uh, extra chest frontal projection uh, of patient showing a, a rounded well defined opacity homogeneous opacity in the left uh, lower zone uh, with a um, uh, vessel seen extending from uh, this opacity towards the hilum uh, okay. the <clears throat> This is the uh, in keeping with the previous history and uh, um, uh, findings on CT range. The most likely finding would be uh, AVM uh, of uh, uh, in the so chest as well. When, when there is a pulmonary AVM, whenever there is a pulmonary AVM and then there is an uh, intracerebral AVM. So, what will you consider? How will you? Uh, uh, hemorrhagic. Yes. Yes. Patient, patient is having hemorrhagic metallic that is uh, hereditary hemorrhagic. Uh, I did it, yeah. So uh, in AVM, you have to search for uh, when you find one AVM, you have to search for other similar okay. malformation either in liver or in lung. So that is very important. Okay. Uh, uh, of an adult patient, uh, there is a uh, uh, abnormal intensity you see at the uh, uh, the right. Uh, um, deep white matter uh, uh, um, at the level of uh, uh, the temporal of uh, it is also in ending uh, mid, mid, uh, midline towards the left side uh, it is giving uh, on decorated images it is showing uh, uh, multiple uh, filling defects uh, sorry filling defects I'm sorry uh, um, um, Loss of uh, uh, signal, uh, uh, which is also seen on the uh, uh, coronal view. Uh, it is uh, there is no perivisual edema is noted. Uh, uh, this vision is confined to the uh, deep white matter. Uh, no uh, hydrocephalus is seen. Uh, uh, on coronal images, there is hyper intensity T1 uh, matrix images. There is the uh, um, the, uh, also showing a, a loss of signal on the same side. Uh, 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 there is also hyper intense uh, signals are noted on the uh, right uh, side of the T1 rated images uh, um, uh, on the uh, white matter. matter. Um, so it is uh, um, uh, the feeling defects uh, are uh, most probably uh, uh, seen are uh, dilated to vessels. Uh, so, uh, okay, Dr. Sana, can I stop you here and ask you a few things? Yes, sir. You are provided with two images, right? One is T2 weighted axial. Okay. Yes. So, these, we have we have two set of images. We have two images. One is T2 weighted axial and the other is coronal post contrast. E1 and B. So, you said that we have this lesion. You localized it in white matter. So, which which is the white matter, central white matter. This is the area above the ventricles, which is central semi ovate, right? Mm -hmm. This is not white matter. How will you localize this region? Uh, I just want to give you one important uh, tip here that uh, whenever you are describing, describing a lesion, your anatomical concepts should be very strong because on anatomy, no examiner, you know, uh, spares a candidate um i know it's a harsh word but still i have to use it but when you are you know uh, uh struggling with your basics then no then the examiners uh, prefer that you come the next time so you have to localize the lesion uh, especially in brain 
other parts as well. And you have to localize it very well. So now here you can see on the axial images that this is basal ganglia. So along the third ventricle, this is the region of thalamus. Yes. Right? And you should use the word instead of abnormal signal intensity, you should use that there are multiple tor tortuous dilated vessels appearing as areas of because these become print etiologies. When I listen only to your words and I'm not looking at the images, I'm unable to uh, make my mind that which that the, the, the region you are describing doesn't come to my mind the way it should be. So then there is some thickening in the soft tissue. So what you know what your thought process? In a difficult case, it's a tricky case. I don't expect the pinpoint diagnosis view, but I want you to have a logical approach. Well, uh, basically, it, uh, it, 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 this is the pathology of uh, vascular pathology. Uh, as, uh, it's a vascular pathology, right? I agree. This could be, it could be a vasculitis or uh, as I cannot see any mass lesion which is uh, uh, associated with this uh, dilated uh, vessels. So uh, I I think so. This is a pathology of uh, 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 vessels. Uh, this is not. Uh, uh, I just, uh, you you read in your books neurocutaneous neurocutaneous syndromes. There is some involvement of skin and some involvement brain parenchyma. So it is a type of cutaneous syndrome. Not very common or like typical NF1, NF2, etc. Uh, but this is also a neurocutaneous syndrome in which there are vascular malformations of the thalamus and vascular malformation in the scalp tissue. Um, even if you tell me in your exam this much, that is sufficient for me. I will give you full marks for that, for your description, for your signals, for your uh, uh, anatomical localization and for describing it as a uh, lesion which is centered on the brain as well as some part of the lesion is in the uh, skin. So it is a type of neurocutaneous syndrome in which there are thalamic avians with subcutaneous avians and to pinpoint it further it is called Viber mason syndrome. So even if you don't take this name and you call it a neurocutaneous syndrome or you call it a thalamic avian with subcutaneous avian, I will give you full marks for that because I am more concerned with that you are able to pick both of the pathologies and you, you are able to categorize them. Okay, um, I'm provided with multiple NF and multi sequential spot images of MRI brain. Okay. This is T1, T1 post contrast. Okay. T2 diffusion and ADC images. So, T1 post contrast sagittal, clear coronal, T2 sagittal, and SWI images. Okay. Abnormal signal intensity areas are seen involving the left temporal lobe okay. um, which is appearing hyper intense on T1 and uh, hyper intense on T2 weighted images not showing diffusion restriction showing uh, peripheral enhancement and showing massive edema okay. these are showing flow words on windward sequences Multiple dropouts, right? So, multiple, multiple, multiple. so this okay. uh, this is a hemorrhagic area. This is a hemorrhagic area showing flowers on okay. uh, SWI images. And I'm considering the history of uh, metastatic carcinoma with METS. Yes. So um, I'm thinking of uh, some post intervention procedure, AV, uh, post intervention. Um, can you show me the history, please? I just want to status post treatment with solitary brain meds. Okay. So I'm with these flow words. I'm thinking of post intervention AB malformation with these flow words. Uh, okay. And uh, or it could it could be a hem recurrence, but this then th this wouldn't show such flow words on SWI images. Okay, so uh, to this patient had a surgery of the okay. solitary brain metastatic deposit. You can see the craniotomy okay. defect here. Yeah, Later yeah. on, the surgical bed was radiated. Okay. So these are post radiation changes. Okay. So how will you differentiate between tumor recurrence and post radiation changes? 
tumor re- re- a diffusion it's uh, showing a diffusion rated image so there's no diffusion in it so that means that there is no recurrence in it so this has to be a necrotic comp- this has to be a fibrotic ch- uh, like, like post intervention changes in it okay. but i i'm not thinking of any specific diagnosis for that okay so this it is just like a scarred area with some fine kind of um, um, enhancement and some yeah. lower showing the general areas of necrosis and hemorrhage and no significant diffusion restriction and yes. it is a very bizarre kind of enhancement right Yes, yes. With so, uh, the standard MR modalities, I agree, not reliably make a distinction between tumor recurrence, pseudo progression, and radio necrosis. It's not always possible. It's actually this radio necrosis is a combination of endothelial cell, glial cell damage, activation of fibrinolytic enzyme, and a lot of processes going on. So, the next investigations on the basis of which we decide, because you have to tell a next investigation in your exam as well. So yes. there are three to four investigations which are, uh, you know, uh, in literature they are recommended. That is a perfusion MR and MR spectroscopy, PET scan and follow-up scans. Okay. So on perfusion yes. MR, you have to keep it in your mind that the uh, regional cerebral blood volume, it is decreased in cases of radio mm-hmm. necrosis. Radiation however, necrosis. Case, yes, however, it would be increased in cases of tumor recurrence. And similarly, on MR spectroscopy, there is decreased choline peak and there is significantly large lipid peak which is uh, representing necrosis but still you are not very sure in this patient in this particular patient we had a set of uh, follow-up images on which we could we could see that the edema was increasing and the enhancement was very bizarre so on the basis of follow-up scans we decided similarly this patient had a PET scan uh, for her okay. uh, metastatic workup as part of her metastatic workup for CA breast as advised by her oncologist. So can you please explain these PET images? So on PET scan <coughs> axial section, I can see there is no uh, uptake uh, in the region of the site of the surgery or in the site of the previous metastatic deposit. It is high. Uh, so that um, confirms my diagnosis to radiation, necro- radiation, uh, sorry, radiation necrosis. It's not yes. a recurrence or it's, it's not a secondary deposit too. So, so it's very important as a radiologist to decide that whether it is radiation necrosis, this is progression, pseudo progression, and we should, you know, try our best. We should use all of the additional tools as I described in my previous slide um, as uh, per availability in our setup to give a, you know, a proper uh, guideline to the patient because the management is decided according, accordingly. Thank you, Mokhtu. So provided with a single uh, axial image of CT brain plane, and I can appreciate that there is a very well-defined, uh, partly calcified lesion in the uh, left parietal lobe uh, with the, uh, uh, with significant calcification in it, okay. uh, and there is a subtle perianal edema, and a few hyperintense foci are also noted uh, within this lesion which are less dense as compared to calcification and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, no uh, uh, it is causing a mass effect it appears to be intraaxial it is making acute angle with the inner table of the bone and you no know, any other region is noted within the rest of the brain parenchyma and no uh, hydrocephalus is noted and there is effacement of the uh, left-sided lateral ventricle okay so how will you proceed with this patient uh, so, you your differential and next investigation. So, it is, uh, ma'am, uh, it, it appears more likely an intra axial as compared to extra axial uh, So, uh, my uh, differential will be any intra axial calcified tumor like uh, uh, oligodendroglioma. Second, it can be any uh, calcified um, okay. angiomatous malformation for which I will confirm it on any angiography. So what will you do first, angiography or MRI? Uh, ma'am, uh, for characteristic, ma'am, uh, MRI then angiography. Okay. So, but the patient and went and angiography first. Okay. And this was the image provided. Uh, it was not done at our center. The patient brought the images from some other center. We did not have the. CD and these were the reconstructed images. That was the only film provided to us, and this was labeled as an AVM. 
but looking okay. at these CT images, we were not very, you know, satis satisfied. So yes, we, uh, a CT was performed at our center, and later on, an MRI. Can you please explain these images? Okay. Uh, Ma'am, I am providing with multiplanar multi sequential MRI images T2, T1 plane, T1 with contrast, GRE, flare, DW, and EDC. And uh, there is an abnormal hyper intense, uh, abnormal cement ST area um, is noted within the posterior aspect of the left pilotal lobe involving gray white matter. It is iso uh, intense on T1 and it is hyper intense on T2, not stressed on the flare. It shows subtle enhancement. It, multiple blooming artifacts are noted uh, within it on GRE sequences and uh, the central part does not show any uh, diffusion restriction. It is in hypo intense and peripheral part show uh, subtle uh, uh, restriction and it is the central part is hyper intense on the ABC. Uh, so multiple uh, blooming artifacts are noted suggesting uh, some type of uh, um, hemorrhagic component within this layer. No, the blooming is secondary is to the no specification. Any, uh, very subtle enhancement. The the blooming is secondary to yes, this calcification. Yes, yes. So this is the difference between everybody had been asking that how will we differentiate between okay. calcium and hemosiderin. So this is how the calcification appears on MR images. You cannot appreciate any specific T2 weighted signals. It's just a vague area. And you can see a vague okay. area of uh, blooming on uh, SWS. So everybody, that is the reason I kept this case. Because so that you can compare the uh, dropout of uh, calcification and the baseline signals of calcification on T1 and T2 and they had they are very different from the initial uh, images which I showed you regarding a cavernoma. Regarding yes, they are very different from the hemocytium. Yes. So, this is, so, so when you keep on you know looking at images you keep on differentiating. Right ma'am, right. Okay, so now what will you call this? Do you think this is, I think it is an alien, do you agree with the diagnosis being given to this patient? It is very much calcified and uh, I won't uh, agree with the ma'am such, I, I have not seen my ma'am such a calcified alien. Okay, so what do you think that uh, it is? What is your differential? My, my differential will be any calcified intraaxial tumor like oligodenoglioma. Okay, good. Right, so this, is, uh, so this can be, so I just want to give few uh, important messages to you on these images. Whenever you are looking at space occupying region in the brain parenchyma, this should be your general approach. You have to look at multiplicity, it, it is, is it solitary or multiple? So in this case, we saw that this is a solid relation. Then you have to look at the margins. Are they well-defined, diffuse, infiltrative? If you look at the T2-weighted images as well as the players, these are diffuse, infiltrative kind of margins, right? So similarly, if you uh, you have to look at the volume of the lesion, is has it increased the parenchymal mass? Is there perilesion edema? So if you look at this, you can see that these are small gyri, but these gyri they appear to be swollen. They have increased in volume. So it seems that there is a mass which is a place in the normal brain parenchyma. Edematous, a swollen parenchyma is seen. Similarly, you have to look at the diffuminated images at the hemorrhage calcium cyst. So in this case, we can see that there is calcium. We appreciated that yes. even on um, the CT, which is the enhancement, yes. non-enhancing ring enhancement speculated. So we could see that uh, this is this was having um, uh, some heterogeneous kind of enhancement. So this was the case of oligodendroglioma. So whenever an oli uh, uh, the, the radio genomics uh, re revolution according to the new WHO classification in which was given in 2016 uh, for these brain tumors was that you have to look at the IDH status and 1P19 correlation in cases of brain tumors. So whenever there is IDH mutation and whenever there is I 1P19 correlation, that means the survival rate of the patient is Uh, Multiplanar, multi sequential MRI uh, brain provided uh, T2, uh, T uh, flare, axial, and uh, T1 and uh, T1 post, uh, post contrast images uh, showing there is a uh, 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 there is an uh, uh, hyper intense normal signal intensity rounded area is noted in the mid uh, uh, mid cerebellum uh, which is uh, uh, hyper on t2 
and uh, 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 and uh, low on T1 and uh, on the post contrast images it show uh, homogeneous enhancement and uh, uh, another uh, lien is also seen at the level of foramina magnum which is also uh, hyper intense on T2 uh, so uh, on the uh, uh, the rest of the brain pain uh, uh, is very uh, remarkable. Uh, okay, so what is so your intention? On the uh, basis of my, uh, madam, uh, considering patient's uh, age and uh, history, uh, the lien is type okay. uh, uh, and post contrast enhancement. Madam, it includes uh, uh, ependymoma. And uh, uh, okay. as it's re re reaching up to the uh, uh, forum magnum, so a uh, 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 and uh, uh, patient is of uh, 24 years old, astrocytoma is excluded. And uh, okay, so you said that there are more than one lesions, right? Yep, yeah, yes, madam. Is one this is one lesion or there are multiple lesions? Multiple years. Okay, so one in the region of the cerebellar vermis. Yeah. Okay, so are these intra axial or extra axial? Uh, madam, uh, the one which is in that level of foramina magnum, it seems to be as uh, extra axial. And uh, okay, there are two regions in the region of foramen magnum. One is anterior yeah, and one is posterior. Yes, anterior one is anterior. Both anterior of them are extra axial. Uh, Both of them are extra axial. Okay, so uh, the the Can interior one is. Can you see a CSF cleft here? Can you see a CSF cleft around the incision? So this is extra axial. Extra axial. This is extra axial. So this is extra axial, and there are multiple extra axial regions along the cerebral convexity. Cortex. Yes. Okay, so these are all. So, madam, I Yes, madam. Okay, so, so uh, the endometrial enhancement and the uh, multiplicity of the lien is likely suggestive of uh, multiple meningiomas. And, uh, uh, and, uh, okay, so if you look at the lining of the fourth ventricle, uh, uh, there are few two yes, to three tiny enhancing nodules. Can yes, these madam. be appendiomas? Nodules. These are lining the fourth ventricle. Uh, lining the fourth ventricle. Yes. Can you see these uh, tiny enhancing nodules? What will these? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Can you uh, see a small lesion adjacent to the brainstem here? Yeah, these. Uh, what can this be? Okay. What is this? Uh, it is uh, hypo intense. Uh, can and, this be a small schwannoma? Because you said that this is yes. uh, NF2. Yes, so, as I told you that uh, when we decide which pathology is this, then yes, we start certain associated features. So, when there are multiple meningiomas, the next thing that should come to your mind should yes. be presence of multiple epidermomas okay. as well as multiple neurofibromas. Yes, schwannomas, yes. neurofibromas. Yeah, there were, there were, yes, there were few in the, uh, in this region, which are not seen on these images, but they yes. were in the, you know, along the 7th and 8th nerve. There was one yeah. along the line of 9th nerve, which can be seen here. There were few along the line of 5th nerve. So this was a case of MS1. If you, uh, NF2, and if you yes. look at this uh, region, in the region of, you can see that there are multiple rounded, well defined uh, mm -hmm. nodular enhancing areas which show similar signal characters to this uh, neurofib, these uh, meningiomas. So, there were tiny meningiomas in the midline as well. So, what will you do next now? Uh, uh, what is the most important thing to do in this case now? Uh, um, uh, what is uh, the patient? Neurocutaneous syndrome, madam. So, when there is marked compression in the cervical medullary junction, you should send the patient for neurosurgical consultation immediately for decompression because there is 
enhancement enhancement along the posterior aspect there was a an end plate meningioma along the posterior aspect of foramen magnum there was a large meningioma anteriorly this was resulting in significant compression of the cervical spinal cord and medulla and the cervical medullary junction this patient need immediate decompression and should be sent to the neurosurgery immediately right okay thank you so it is important to decide that what is the next most important step uh, how will you guide guide the patient Right. Oh, so, okay. 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 Yes. So I'm uh, I'm able to appreciate that there appears to be uh, uh, a hyper intense lesion on T2 with sounding rim of hypo intensity at the on the right side uh, of the CP angle uh, and. Uh, uh, it shows uh, hyper intensity on T2 and on post contrast images there appears to be a uh, fine and nodule, uh, slight nodule uh, enhancing nodule is appreciated. And uh, on uh, clear, uh, in, uh, on uh, this lesion is showing a slight uh, mass effect with no uh, perilational edema. And, uh, there is no mass effect. There is no mass effect, no perilational edema. On T2 viewed images, there is no mass effect. The mass effect should be hyper intense on T2. I cannot see any very regional T2 hyper intense images. Neither on, on the flare, flare I can appreciate. No, on the flare images, it is lying here. There is no very regional bright edema here. Okay, uh, so on the flare images, uh, it appears to be uh, again a hyper intense rim with central hyper enhancement with no uh, edema. Sounding it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the hypotense rim is suggestive of some chronic bleed. So, I'm uh, suspecting some angiomatous uh, malformation. It, uh, it could be a cover noma. Okay. Or, uh, uh, further, I would, uh, in association with cover noma, I would uh, look for the developmental venous anomaly and uh, uh, look for the uh, multiplicity of the lesion. And uh, this, uh, uh, this could be. Uh, some, um, some, uh, though the, the to me the appearance is quite typical, and uh, on the top of the list uh, for me, it, it, I won't provide okay, any so differential. Yes, it is a non-binary. I won't provide any differential. Yes, there is no differential. This was a uh, patient who was a computer operator. He was having that ringing sound in his ear for past so many uh, years. Then he went to the neurologist. She did the imaging and there was this T2-weighted hemosiderin ring and the patient was given the diagnosis of cavernoma and then the patient was sent for neurosurgical opinion. There are different treatment options in cavernomas. Either it is removed surgically depending on the location. There is some role of radiotherapy as well. Stereotactic radiosurgery is performed in few cases. Uh, but uh, it does not decrease its size but the symptoms, they regress in few patients. There are few studies which show that. So the patient was sent for neurosurgical opinion and this is a very typical cavernoma. So when you are seeing CP, you are shown CP angle masses in your exam of fibromas. Keep it in your mind that you can be either shown a lipoma, a meningioma or a cavernoma in the CP angle. So that all of you can see, this was a patient, young patient who presented the signs of meningeal irritation. I just wanted to highlight in these images that you have to look at the post contrast flare images and on post contrast and plain flare images we have to look at the lepto meninges and there if there are bright signals along the lepto meninges they are they represent the lepto meningeal enhancement in cases of meningitis here we can see that there is basal meningeal enhancement as well along the anterior aspect of pons and in the basal cisterns it is very evident the patient had csf analysis and that was a case of tb meningitis although there were no tuberculosis case in which there was skull based fungal infection which is very hypo intense on T2 weighted images there was extension to the contralateral side there was involvement of uh, uh, sphenoid sinus partly there was intraparenchymal edema showing intraparenchymal extension in the brain parenchyma this is all T2 hypo intense all of this was uh, iso intense on T1 there was significant post contrast enhancement there was extension of these signals within the orbit on the on this side we can appreciate here there was extension in the uh, fat 
uh, of the base of the skull, all the fat planes, they are obliterated, infratemporal fossa terebrate muscles. So this was a case of fungal sinusitis with skull base osteomyelitis and extension in the brain. This was uh, another case in which the patient presented to us with uh, vague uh, sensory and motor systems. Uh, this was um, found to be a case of uh, tube infective multiple sclerosis. So you should be familiar with demyelinating lesions of different types, their appearances, their you have you should be able to categorize that the lesion is centered in the white matter or is it going to cortex? What is the area of involvement? What kind of enhancement is it has? Is it a complete ring or an incomplete ring? So this was a case of multiple sclerosis. Keep in mind the enhancement pattern, which is very important when you are explaining the lesions in your exam or otherwise while reporting. Whenever there is incomplete ring pattern, you have to consider demyelination. Whenever there is complete ring pattern, if it restricts, then it is a, a typical infection that is bacterial abscess, the internal, internal portion restricts. And if the periphery restricts, then that, that can be in cases of metastasis or so the case which recently presented to our hospital. For 13 post infection, there were multiple areas of demyelination which were showing uh, partially in few uh, rings appear. This was a case restriction in the central part on peripheral restriction, no drop out in SWI images, and this was the case of Adam. So, this is for the sake of care. This, this is a very nice image of catechism of white metal based lesions. Uh, you can save this image as well. This is an important image which can help you in categorizing different lesions.